Possibly against my better judgment, I'm going to start this video by telling you how to summon Bloody Mary in the hopes that you don't do it. The way I learned when I was about nine years old, the story that I was told was that if you go into a bathroom and you turn out all the lights and you hold a candle and you say Bloody Mary in the mirror three times, then this ghost girl will appear to you covered in blood and scare you. Uh, we didn't really have a she'll kill you kind of deal, but it was more about just the fact that someone appearing in the mirror was going to be very, very unsettling. Later on, I heard versions where if you were evil, you would die, or it would claw your eyes out. We'll get into some of the different versions of this, but at its core, this is usually something people hear about in grade school. And it's one of those things that you're not supposed to do, and it's you know supposed to be scary and spooky, and uh, you know we'd all we'd all go into the bathroom and chant Bloody Mary in the mirror three times, and then tell everyone we saw her, you know, as it was. I don't know if we ever did, and it's possible that those of us who say we saw her really did see something, and the mainstream psychology would suggest that just we have these pattern-seeking monkey brains that make us see things that are not always there when we're convinced we're supposed to be seeing something. On the flip side, summoning rituals are ancient and pretty common, and that's how the Bloody Mary thing, so to speak, got going. This started off in the 20th century, possibly even earlier, as a divination ritual so that young women could have a little bit of fun. They would turn off all the lights in the house, they would grab a mirror, and a candle and they would walk backwards up a flight of stairs. And by the time they got to the top of the stairs, the handheld mirror would show the face of their future husband. If it showed the Grim Reaper or a skull, then that meant that you were going to die before you got married. And if it showed nothing at all, then you would never get married. Which, I mean, that's kind of sad if your goal is to get married. So anyway, the point is this began as a way of fortune telling and anyone would tell you that divination rituals can tend to go really, really wrong. Anything that involves contacting a spiritual realm has the possibility of bringing in things you don't want to encounter, such as demons and ghosts and otherworldly forces beyond our control or understanding, kind of the supernatural version of man-made horrors beyond your wildest dreams. Over the years, however, this morphed into something else entirely, and I've heard stories from as early as the 1960s that sound much more similar to the modern Bloody Mary legend than the divination ritual of the 1910s and 20s. And that story is the much more violent version. The exact ritual itself varies from place to place, and a lot of different areas seem to have their own version of where Bloody Mary came from, who she is. So what you get is a, a variety of possibilities, but they all revolve around the same few steps. You turn off the lights, you light a candle, you stand in front of the mirror, and you say Bloody Mary in the mirror three times. And you're supposed to kind of chant it, it's supposed to be rhythmic. In some versions, you've got to turn around. In some versions, you've got to say her name 13 times. In some versions, you say, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, I stole your baby. It doesn't matter. They are all summoning rituals. And given how summoning rituals can work traditionally across languages, as long as you're having the same sentiment, it's my assumption that if Bloody Mary is out there waiting for people to summon her, she's probably not going to be super specific about the wording you use. It's more that you, she, she can tell that she's being summoned based on the behavior behavior and based on the intention behind your words. Now, in some versions of this, Mary isn't automatically a violent spirit. She's just going to scare you or she will appear and warn you of something, but it does vary. You have certain versions where Mary will appear, scare you, and then just go away. And then there's versions where Mary will reach out of the mirror and pull you in and steal your soul and then you're trapped in the mirror and then you become Michael Jackson. Most commonly, it seems that Mary is going to commit some sort of act of violence. That seems to vary depending on how old you are when you're actually learning about this story or telling the story. Like many things, it gets more and more violent over time and with age as you can stomach more terror. Some cases, she will drag you towards her and claw out your eyes. She will scratch your arms. She'll leave you dying in a pool of blood. She'll strangle you, any number of things. And in a lot of versions of the story, this revolves around you as a person and what you you've done. If you are a righteous person, you've done nothing wrong in your life, you're a good person, you will experience nothing from Mary. She might not even appear to you. 
But if you're hiding something, if you hit somebody, if you hit a homeless person with your car and they died and you never saw justice for it, you just drove away, then Mary might be a little bit more inclined to scratch out your eyes and leave you choking in a pool of your own blood. So you see, it's kind of, it's a little bit of a righteous anger thing, you know? But who is Mary? You know, who's, who's this figure that is appearing in our mirrors? And who said she could do that? Well, if it's one of the possibilities, because we can't really tell if this is an English folk legend or an American folk legend, it seems to appear in the 50s or 60s, where'd it come from? Well, the, the one version is that it's Mary I of England, who had hundreds of Protestants burned at the stake and earned the nickname, thus, Bloody Mary. There's also the possibility that it was an unattested woman, unattested meaning that we don't have a record of it, this is just a legend, that Mary was Mary Worth, and she was a woman who would kidnap and kill slaves along the Underground Railroad, which is super not cool. One version of it is that Mary Worth was actually a witch outside of a village in England, and that she would lure children into the forest, and then eventually they burned her uh, home to the ground and left her to die, and that's why now she appears in people's mirrors to haunt the descendants of those families. And there's a version where Mary is just a witch, and her goal is to trap you inside of mirrors and steal your life force so she can remain youthful. But the problem I have with all of this is that the term witch has evolved significantly, and at no point has it ever really involved being summoned. You see, the etymology of the word witch, which is wiki, uh, from Old English, is a person who uses magic to tell the future, somebody who practices divination, somebody who summons. It's not one who is summoned. So a witch shouldn't be something that gets summoned, at least not a living witch. Now, a dead witch, you could argue that maybe they were able to stay on Earth as a ghost, a spirit, an aspect of some sort, and that's how you summon them. But more realistically, the things that get summoned are demons, and divination rituals are known to be dangerous because when you perform one, even if you're inviting the right thing into your presence, you could very easily end up opening up your portal to all sorts of other things. This is why you don't play with Ouija boards. This is why you don't do seances. You just should avoid those things. But some people don't. And then, you know, when you're a nine-year-old kid and you don't know anything about summoning and rituals and folklore, you might have the idea that this could just be a fun party game for my sleepover. But it really shouldn't be. And I know I say that as somebody who for a TikTok did the summoning ritual like three weeks ago. So maybe I don't have the most credibility. But I'd like to know, what were your experiences with this? Did you hear about Bloody Mary as a child? You know, tell us what year it was, because that one I'm really curious about. I want to pin down where this came from. So, you know, if you remember what year it happened to you, or you have grandparents, maybe ask them. And then let us know in the comments what you think. Who, who Bloody Mary is, in your opinion? Does the summoning ritual work? Is this real, or is it a trick of our minds? And when do you think it originated? What information can you gather on it? Because as we're working on this, we're compiling an almanac for our website, and we'd love for you to be able to contribute and help us out to really help everybody get a true academic look at how folklore works without any of the clickbaity mumbo jumbo. So if you want to contribute to that, let us know in the comment section, and check out our other pages on TikTok, on uh, Instagram. We have a Patreon, which is the Lore Lodge. You can join for as little as $1 a month. And we have lorelodge.com, where you can now subscribe to a monthly newsletter. And we have a members function coming soon that will allow you to communicate with other people in the community, post blogs, share things, and just kind of have a bit more of an immersed Lore Lodge experience. And we're super excited about that. So if you want to support us, make sure to like this video, hit subscribe, click the notification bell, and share with a friend or two. And if you have purchased any Lore Lodge merchandise, you should send us a picture of you wearing it because we want to post some on Instagram. And if you send something to us, we will give you a discount code for future purchases. With all that said, I'm Aiden Mattis, and thanks for stopping by the Lore Lodge.